it, it's good to have you with us. And if you're just joining us, good morning. You're just in time for press review with Kevin Osido, who is a governance expert. And we're going to take a look at some of the top stories making headlines. A reason for you to grab your local dailies, more so the standard newspaper this morning. Incredible stories that are being highlighted that are of great importance. Kevin, it's good, it's good to see you. Good morning. Um, first of all, let's take a look at this. Let me show you what our front page we are running with. This. Why the cost of food will go up in July. We're going to come to that in just a moment. But also this one of the top stories that we've taken today. Doctors who are charged with stealing a man's heart. All right. So we also give you a timeline of how that happened back in June 25th of 2015. Um, the date when the heart of Timothy was allegedly stolen from the funeral home. And it goes all the way down to where um, the cash bill conditions for the pathologist is around 300,000 Kenyan shillings. Kevin, I was just telling Michael before um, we went on break that I thought this is just something we see in the movies. To, for this harvesting of people's bodies to be happening in <laughs> Kenya, because there's sometimes those people who want to optionally um, give out their, to donate their organs once they die, but then stealing, this is something yeah, else. This is, this is crazy, I think. Uh, and as you rightfully said, movies are indeed a depiction of what is happening in the society or, is just a, or what is just about to happen. And for it to be happening in our country today, then it means that we really have to relook re and rethink about certain things in our different careers, including uh, medical ethos. For instance, what, what is this thing that would push a medical doctor or a pathologist to really want to take away um, a, a part of uh, somebody's, of, of a dead person's mm. body, you know? Mm. And then uh, what is it for? And probably the investigations need to move further into looking at are there family relations, are, are there interests, what is really happening? Because again, uh, from what we are reading and seeing here, this is not the first time the same person is doing this. So really it means that uh, we need to also look at the the manner in which we met judges, yeah. like if he did it for the first time, what happened? And how come he's doing it for the second time? So what will happen that would deter him from doing it a third time? And what are these measure that, measures that will also put in place to uh, deter other doctors or pathologists from doing And who doing else is outside there thing? doing this as exactly. well? Exactly. And who else is out there doing this? And why is it being done in very high level facilities like mm. live in a home, you know, which is where we expect that uh, many of our very high end, high level officials or uh, you know, uh, citizens really prefer going to. So what what would be happening at uh, City Mochari and others, you know? All right. It's it's a very scary story. So make sure you grab your copy of the standard this morning. It is on page six. But let's now head over to page three. I want to bring your attention to yet another story. Um, page three, which is right here. Hotel critics for its breastfeeding shame. Again, it's 2018 and we're in this conversation of whether women are allowed to breastfeed in public, something that is supposed to be natural, but hey, it's okay. Let's, let's, let's banter around, around this. What are your thoughts on this? Let me just even read for your paragraph so you can get an idea of how it is. Now, demonstrators marched to the streets of Nairobi yesterday to protest the mistreatment of a woman who was allegedly banned from breastfeeding her baby in a restaurant. Kevin, this is 2018 and here we are as citizens. Yeah, quite unfortunate, though I really do not understand why the, host, the hotel is still hesitant about receiving uh, notice and complaints and all these issues. I think the, the management is still saying they haven't received any right. formal complaint. And Only uh, yet, restaurants. Yeah, yet we have people going to the streets and we have serious attention being put on this particular subject. But again, uh, probably to look at it, you know, if this happened in our village, uh, because I've uh, more or less tried to have this discussion with villagers back at home, and oh. they're saying this cannot happen because... Uh, uh, what would happen is you're not even allowed to, you know, breastfeed your baby in public for fear of, uh, you know, Kurushiwa, Kitu, Ama, you know, just... Being jailed, ex being looked at. Exactly. That, that probably um, an evil eye would be looking at your baby and so it might affect or it might, uh, you know, um, interfere with, with the baby, the feeding uh, mechanisms and all that. So really there are, in my view, different ways of looking at it. Whether this is happening because we are in a city, whether it's happening because we are in 2018 and what really would, be ha what really would happen if you are in 2000, for instance, or 1998, <laughs> how would people react to this? So I think probably this is really important because then it presents... Um, uh, and, uh, it presents an opportunity for us to have discussions around our lifestyles and uh, how we look at issues. But again, Zinzi, as you were saying earlier on, I would have really loved to see this happen 
because someone has run away with NYS money and, and 1.6 billion is, is, is down there. And, and Kenyans are just out there in a crazy manner going to tell the president, fire her, fire her, fire him, fire him, you know. Because then we have to make the same kind of uh, emotions on the things that really affect us. You know what, Kevin, that's actually what my, my biggest problem is, is that even as citizens, we, have, we do not know our priorities. Yeah. Here we are um, fighting against breastfeeding in public when yet public funds are being stolen and we cannot go on the street for that yeah. specific issue. Priorities, even as citizens, is something Even the that way we look at things, you know, because, uh, of course, I saw a few men uh, going together with the, the women there to be able to mm. demonstrate. But what if it was about a man who has probably done? Would we see men again going out? So, yes, I agree that in the manner in which we present our priorities and react is also different mm -hmm. in the manner in which... Uh, depending on where we are standing. But I think as a country, we probably also need a national dialogue around the dialogue around things that really uh, matter to us. Because as you also said, we'll be talking about rising costs of, uh, of living, especially oh, yes. UNGA. And we're talking about people running away with public funds. And at the same time, we're also talking about people going to the streets to spend a whole day to demonstrate over how to breastfeed yes, a baby. Yes, by all to... means, let's focus on yeah, breastfeeding. So I think this really is, um, it again presents an opportunity for us to talk about what are the real issues that really uh, matter to Kenyans and how can we be able to prioritize them. And even as we talk about them, do the people who make the decisions, the policy makers and the people who ensure that uh, these decisions are implemented, to what extent do they even listen to those who go to the streets to right. talk about them? Right. You know, right. Kevin, I'm reminded, just this is May, uh, if I'm not wrong, end of April, we saw a scenario close to this, but in America, Starbucks, yeah. where two black men were arrested just for waiting for a friend. Um, there's also another scenario where someone was refused to use their loose because they were black. Yeah. So what happened is that, of course, after, out the, uh, after the outrage, they closed all their Starbucks offices, making sure that the employees get trained on how to handle racism um, and, and such issues. Then when they open, they say that anyone in the public, whether you order something or not, is mm. then allowed to use their restrooms. Yes, Hinting at Olive Restaurant precisely, and their management. The reason that you're yeah. saying that you did not receive this. Yeah. <laughs> and and further to that is also to look at uh, what are, what are the other you know equipment or facilities in the mm -hmm. other restaurants. So mm -hmm. is it only about Olive Restaurant? Have we gone to these others to be able to look at? Do they have these crashes where? kids or breastfeeding mothers can be able to move in and safely breastfeed their children? Have Thank we looked you. at churches? Have we looked at schools for mm -hmm. breastfeeding uh, teachers and lecturers and all that? Have we looked at public offices? Have we been seeing a, seeing a friend of mine challenging people on social media and telling them in our office at this different commission, we have uh, actually a place, a safe place for breastfeeding wow. mothers to be able to come and breastfeed. So in my view, Zinzi, I would propose that we don't just look at this issue selectively to mm -hmm. focus on Olive Restaurant, but can we also have an audit around the mm -hmm. other restaurants and even uh, matatus and buses, you know. Conducive environment exactly. for it to happen. And even in planes, you know, like so that, that it, it's not just about Olive Restaurant. Even in restaurant. planes. Exactly. I like that. All right, Kevin, <laughs> let's head over to page four. Yeah. So former um, permanent secretary, city council clerk, jailed. Um, a former local government permanent secretary, former Nairobi city council clerk, has been jailed after stealing 283 million Kenyan shillings. He's been fined about 1 million Kenyan shillings and also been sentenced to jail. But look at this, Kakuko's mixed bags of fortunes, the gentleman behind this. Back in 2008, he was appointed as Nairobi city town clerk. In 2010, he was suspended for the mentioning scandal at Cemetery Land. In 2013, he was appointed the Water Energy Environment Executive by former... Um, Governor Evans Kidero. That is in 2013, right mm. after he was mentioned um, for um, the scandal in 2010. It goes on. Back in 2014, he was sacked. Only for February 2018, current Governor Evans, I mean Governor Mike Mbuvi Songkong, to appoint him as co-chair of Nairobi Regeneration Committee. My question here is, Kevin, yeah. is if we already saw smoke in 2010 after he was mentioned in a scandal, only for him to be appointed not by one, not by two. Count uh, by two governors, Mike yeah. Mbuvi Sonko and former Ivan Skidero. Surely, what? Why? Yeah, this this presents uh, another case for us to look at, and uh, really, this is about our laws and uh, institutions that are supposed to safeguard the interests of the citizens. Because hundreds of millions of money. In fact, we are talking about 32, um, almost um, 283. 283 million, mm. you know, Kenya shillings just going down like that. And we're talking about uh, to, uh, someone who's been in public limelight. Uh, have been uh, has been appointed twice and uh, and we're not just 
talking about Mwishimi Wagakuo, we are also talking about a former permanent secretary in mm -hmm. the former local government ministry. Sami Kirui? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the ability for us to be able to strengthen anti-corruption laws and to ensure that anti-institutions anti that are charged with responsibilities to bar people from engaging in corruption issues really do their work and is seen by the public to be doing their work. Because unfortunately in this country, Zinzi, we really, we more or less um, award and reward people who have stolen a lot of money and the people who have just run away with something because they are feeling hungry are the ones that we really jail and we ensure that they are prosecuted. But you see, the paradox in my view should be that we, as, as, as uh, the good book also rightfully says, to whom much is given, much, much is, is expired. Required, and, uh, yes. yes, much is, is required and, and is also expected that. So when you are given responsibilities of this magnitude, Really look at the public and, and uh, public service because that is really what you're there in office to be able to do. It's not for you to enrich yourself. And in the event that anyone enriches him or herself, then institutions that are responsible for anti-corruption and ensuring that these things are not happening really need to come out and do their work. And like Zakias did, take it back to wherever you took it from. Speaking of anti-corruption laws, here's the thing. You steal about 283 million, yeah. you only go to jail for three years, and but you are fined one, one million. million. Yeah. Do you feel as if that is a heavy punishment, yet as a country we are trying to pull down or to tame corruption? It is not. I think it's quite lenient. Yeah, it is very lenient, and that's why people still feel comfortable to just take one million from what you've stolen and mm -hmm. pay back and you walk scot-free. So we need to strengthen those uh, anti-corruption uh, laws. We also need to educate the public so that they are able to not only um, uh, identify corruption issues, but also monitor progress in so far as uh, corruption cases are, are you know, uh, how corruption cases are being handled in this country. Now on page eight, here is a very good juicy story, as someone puts it. Unga prices are set to go up as VAT is imposed. So the KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority, wants to make sure that they can take about 1.7 trillion Kenyan shillings to collect. And to do so, they'll make sure that prices, or that the, what they've tabled to the National Assembly is to make sure that prices go up. So where you find that bread is about 50 Kenyan shillings, it will go up to about 58 Kenyan shillings. But who are we kidding? That's basically 60, Bob. Yeah. Um, but take a look at this. <laughs> Milk and bread are among the basic items. Milk and bread, something that at the common heart of a Kenyan family, it's a meal, are mm. set to go up sharply in July after enactment of planned broad changes on taxation laws that also touch companies. Now, we are expecting um, Henry Rotich to give his um, bill very soon. Mm -hmm. The proposal mm -hmm. must, be, must get approval from the National Assembly. The National Treasury Cabinet, um, Henry Rotich, will also address the amendment in his budget speech. speech rather. If this was to be passed, Oh my goodness, Kevin, what is happening? Do you know right now, even as we speak, there are Kenyans who go without a meal, yet here yeah. we are putting basic commodities, milk and bread, prices to go you up. You know where I work, uh, sometimes, rather many times, I see many of us just going to buy milk mm -hmm. and uh, KDF. Mm -hmm. this, you the know? KDF, yes. Yes, exactly. And, and really, when you're, if we are going to levy, to put levies on the common things that mean a lot to the common monarchy, what are we saying? And mm -hmm. Trust me, this is going to pass because just last week or the other week we were talking about 700% increment on um, uh, on uh, benefits to members of, uh, I mean, members of the National Assembly, former. And so that really means that the president is already set that the moment you leave parliament, then you expect that this and that is going to happen to you, which really is for the common Mwanaenchi to be the one to be. To, to, to pay mm -hmm. out of the taxes that we levy. Plus, the Energy Commission said that soon electricity bill is also set to go up. So you have food prices going up and energy. Here's the thing. Yeah. President Uhuru Kenyatta has over the years said that um, he will tame or that in his term that um, low-cost living would happen. Mind you, one of his big foes is food yeah, and security. housing. Yeah. Food, one of the things that is being touched here. Yeah, so the government needs to really re sit back and, uh, I mean, go back to the drawing board and make proper drawings about this country because if the president wants to leave a legacy of people who are not suffering from uh, insecurity around food and just feeling okay with their lifestyles i think the president really needs to push certain people to also do their work beginning with the uh, kenya revenue authority right. so that the gaps that we that that we see happening at both national and county levels people who are just running away with taxes or, yes. need to be brought back to account for the monies which they are not being uh, which which they are not uh, or perhaps when know, they want sharing. to raise their their pensions yes. or their Salaries, perhaps KRA should actually look at that instead of this, where common Kenyans try to get their meals. Yeah, so a, a very candid discussion around our tax regime really needs to be, you know, to be brought forward. 
this needs to be opened up to the public so that public participation really goes into this. And I would appeal to the Cabinet Secretary, Moishime Warotich, to also ensure that uh, the budget process, because right now it's going on, counties are also doing their budgets, but if you look at uh, public participation processes, it's very, very limited. So, you know, the people are not coming out to be able to, you know, share their sentiments, their feelings, and what they really see happening. So I also want to appeal to the citizens out there, come out and talk to, you know, the people who matter mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the things that, that really concern us. All these percentages we can change that uh, we can change them through a budget uh, process through public participation so let's not look at it like a very technical process let's come out in our different uh, platforms and setups at counties and national levels when the parliament does the gazette notice to invite people to come and do that let's do so let's let's go out there and talk about it plus also time will tell whether henry rotich and the national assembly will actually pass it if they do it speaks volume about our leaders yeah, but let me bring your attention pass. to another story masinga um, to overflow by friday so we've seen what has been happening with the Patel Dam. <laughs> but look at this, Masinga Dam will start to yeah. overflow any time between now and Friday, the government has said. Question is, has the government put measures in measures, set? Yeah. Has it trained or drilled the people within <coughs> that area? Can we learn from Patel Dam crisis? Yeah, and uh, well, that's also both the man-made dams and the natural dams. Really, the big question, as you rightfully said, Zinzi, and I agree with you, is what lessons are we learning? How, can we, how do we strengthen our disaster management mechanisms and uh, structures and systems? And then are the citizens aware, like you rightfully said, training and capacity development, of course, creation of awareness so that people are able to know what to do when the dam starts overflowing right. and then measures to take. Do we need to move homes or how do we, you know, build gabions or uh, structures that can more or less help us in, in, in safekeeping? And speaking of which, today is when the Patel um, victims are getting their state funeral, yeah. um, something that we'll also be keeping our eye on, but more so, um, just as, as, as sort of like a respect to them, can we also handle any other tragedy that will come out from this in the future better in order to make sure that it does not happen yet again? And yet we've had lots of tra uh, tragedies in this country, Zinzi. Unfortunately, we never really learn because it happens here, we treat it selectively like this is happening here. It happens in another area, we treat it like that. And the question again, in my view, is accountability. The people who need to be held accountable, it, if, if it is Patel then, because if it is man-made dam, how do you put up a dam in uh, an, an uphill area where people are living downstream and it is raining? So really, we also need to hold certain people to account for mistakes that they have been able to do so that uh, measures are taken to ensure that a repeat of these 47 right. lives right. lost just like that. Another story that you need to know and probably need to grab your copy of the stand this morning is on international news. What has been happening in Gaza, especially after the Israel moved its capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Protests have been happening around the Gaza border, which has seen bloodshed more than what happened back in 2014. About 1,200 people have been injured. And as of yesterday, 60 people pronounced dead women, children, and men at the heart of it. This is the irony around it. On Monday, as Ivanka Trump was um, commissioning and opening the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, yeah. at the border where there were supposed to be peaceful protests, people have lost their lives. A very big crisis we're seeing UK, France, and other nations, including South Africa, even having to pull their embassies or send their ambassadors home from Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is saying a completely different thing in regards to that. What are your thoughts in this, as, as a governance expert, what are your thoughts when you see this? The Gaza toll rises to 60 as fresh, man, fresh protests erupt. Yeah, governance indeed is, uh, takes place in, uh, through institutions, systems and structures. And on this really is about the history of uh, the U.S., the history of Israel and really what Israel means to the world mm -hmm. and even to Israelites themselves. And moving on to that is to look at the interests of the international community. And in saying that, I think mine is probably to appeal to the international community to really ensure that investigations are done because we cannot be seeing this happen in 2018 and the history of Israel is one that, you know, um, many of these uh, occurrences keep happening and people engage, some people choose not to engage, but I think right. in 2018, especially given the fact that uh, the U.S. has now gone in to be able to not only look at the interests of the U.S. And, uh, and, 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 and Israel, and that is also a replica of what is happening in other countries like in Kenya. If you do an audit of what Israel owns and how people around there interact with whatever they own, then mm -hmm. it really speaks
speaks to you around why this kind of violence would be would be happening. But I think the most important thing is for us to have investigations that will ensure that a repeat of this uh, does not take place. And two is how do we en enhance, you know, um, international relations between countries like Israel and, and, and the U.S. and others because those uh, conflicts could be arising because of certain discomforts that have been created. And so we also need to find out what are these things that are that are making uh, of course we know that Palestine and Israel also have had issues yes, lots the, of issues in, in the, the past, past yes. can we therefore use this opportunity to try and address those issues in the spirit of the handshake we are seeing it happening between South and North Korea it's happening yes. here in Kenya yes. and people just want to live in peace love and, and unity and harmony so can that also be a story that we can rewrite for the sake of Palestine and Israel as we wind up Daily Nation is running with also a very important article um, NYS threw out all the rules in the scam so what happened is the Daily Nation went and looked at the names of businesses. Some enti en entities, rather, in the sample search by the nation do not exist in company registry. In short, the money that was dispersed um, to businesses. Now, business, business names are also in the list of contractors, a violation of standards in public procurement. DCI warns a fat cut that if you store public funds, we will never leave you alone. I feel like I hear this story every single time. We <laughs> yeah. will never leave you alone, but investigations never happen. They are leaving everyone alone, by the way. And we need to see action we want to see people getting arrested we want to see people investigations getting uh, you know finalized in a manner that really is responsive we want to see parliament summoning people and the people who go to, to parliament the JLAC, the justice and legal affairs committee to respond to questions around corruption on issues that affect the common citizen responding to questions in a manner that is also responsive in a manner that ensures that, that citizens can be able to feel satisfied around whether they are responding effectively or not because i think what we have been seeing on uh, these uh, during these hearings is just a circus of mm -hmm. people want to show how big or how small they are people want to play power games and i think it's quite unfortunate for mm -hmm. this to be happening a second time when we just lost uh, lots of uh, almost 800 plus uh, million shillings and whoever then was responsible came and told us it wasn't me and the same issue is happening here because we are saying that some entities are not uh, registered and all They're that and, and if you have tried really going through access to some of these government uh, funds and the kind of scrutiny that you are taking through whether it is youth enterprise fund whether it is women enterprise fund whether it is a 30 percent access to government procurement opportunities it is a very very detailed process a all process right. that really takes you to cr12 you declare who your directors are you go through the state law office and you register you do name search so i don't understand how hundreds of billions mm. you know i mean hundreds of millions 1.6 billion shillings can just disappear because someone is telling us that entities are missing investigations need to be done and the people who are responsible for this need, need to, to be, be prosecuted. put to book and to account for this kind of mess. Right. Thank you so much, Kevin. Welcome. Kevin Osida, who is a governance expert, helping us really tackle the big stories on the local dailies. Make sure you grab your copy of The Standard as well as The Daily Nation. Of course, the issue of um, food prices set to go up is one of the biggest stories. And as a nation, surely, should we still be debating whether women should be breastfeeding their children, a natural phenomenon in public? Money Express is taking a quick break. When we come back, Michael Gitonga will be with you today discuss newsroom and house and media whether we do well when it comes to telling stories of unity. We're taking a quick break, so stay with Money Express.